Good morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot. Well, we've got some more techniques today. I know it's been a while. I've been off the grid. You know what? Stuff happens. But, guess what? I'm back with a really fun thing today. And I'm going to show you multiple ways to use this product. What we're going to use today? Pigment powders. As a stamper, you very likely have used pigment powders in some form or another. I mean, if you've, uh, let's see, what could be an example? If you've watercolored or used acrylic paint or pastels or chalks or colored pencils, then you have used pigments. So today, we're going to use pigment powders. Uh, a lot of people call them mica powders. Um, they're more of a, a synthetic material that's been kind of ground down to where it's almost, it's a mica powder and it, it makes it pearlescent. Okay, now there's several different types out there. Okay, today we are going to be using Pearl X powders by Jack Ward. Okay, they have of about maybe 50 different colors in their set. Okay, um, since these are the ones I have, I will leave you a uh, color chart down below um, along with a PDF of about 10 different ways on how to use mica powders. Okay, now there are different mica powders, Prolex powders. These... Pearl X do not have what they call a binding agent in them, okay? If you used the uh, Rangers Perfect Pearls, now those have a binding agent in them. Um, there's several different ones. I know there's Pearl X. Um, I think there's another one that's called um, Luminar Luminarts. The, I know these two do not have a binding agent, which uh, what that means is that once you put them on their surface and they dry and however you've used them, which I'm going to show you different ways, you must seal them. Okay, you can use a sealant spray. You, I've used where I just use a real fine mist of my hairspray on there. It'll work. So all you're trying to do is just seal it so it doesn't rub off. If you're using Rangers Perfect Pearls or um, Lindy's, those have binding agents so that when they dry, when you're done applying them, the binding agents that in them will keep them from rubbing off. Okay, so you have to kind of know whether you're using a product that does or does not have a binding agent. I will do a PDF down below um, along with the ways to use them and which ones are binding and which ones are not. Now, in that PDF, I'm going to include 10 different ways to use these. Okay, there's probably more. I mean, people use them for um, painting or putting them in, um, you know, those people that make those cups, I guess they call it spinning. They use these pigment powders in there to give color. Um, you can use these in your clear embossing powder or white embossing powder just to change the color of it before you set it. There's a lot of different things you can do with these. Um, another pigment powder, which I've used personally in my craft room, your eyeshadow. It's a pigment powder, but it doesn't have a binding agent, so it would be like these and you would need to seal it. All right, enough talk. Let's make something, okay? I'm going to show you a couple different ways. I'll probably show you one, two, maybe four ways to use these powders in two cards, okay? So let's grab... Uh, I like using dark cardstock for this, okay? It comes out vibrant and pearlescent, but it does work on white cardstock. Look at that. Those are the same pigment powders, okay? So let's start off. How about that little snowman? Let's do a snowman. So I'm going to grab my little snowman here. 
And I think I need to get my Stamparatus. Where is my Stamparatus? I know I got it over here somewhere. There it is. Buried in the midst. So I'm going to grab my Stamparatus. And for the first technique using this, we are going to watercolor with it. So whenever I do watercolor, more often than not, I like to clear emboss or color emboss my image so that my water will pool on my image or kind of kind of keeps you in the lines, so to speak. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to simply clear emboss my snowman because that way his outline will just be the dark blue. So let's put some verse mark on him. And before I forget, use a static tool or a um, dryer sheet. Just keeps your embossing powder from not going everywhere that you don't want it. So we're going to stamp him. Got a nice strong image there. And we'll grab clear embossing powder. And I'm just going to grab a scrap piece of paper to catch my embossing powder. Wow, it's been a while since I did a video. I seem to be uh, kind of not prepared, am I? You know what? This is real life. That's how it works. All right, let's put some clear emboss on him. Tap off all your extra. And if you see, I got a little where I didn't want it. Take the brush. Wipe that off. Wipe off any extra that you didn't want. And let's heat set him. And only for lack of the fact I've done it before, let's pick up this embossing powder before I turn on my heat tool. <coughs> yeah, done that a few times. Hit the heat tool before you covered your powder and it goes everywhere. Let's heat set him real quick. I like to heat mine a little bit from the back. A little bit from the front, kind of keeps your cardstock from warping. Oh, it's warming up now. There it goes. Don't you just love heat embossing? It's so magical. I think I told you that's what got me hooked on stamping up and stamping was First time I did heat embossing, I was hooked. Alright, we got a little snowman there. And now the first way, let me wipe this off real quick. The first way we're going to use our powders is we're going to use it like a watercolor paint. Yep, just like watercolor. Set that aside. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to grab a couple colors. I know I want to use my pearl white. Let's try, what is this one? This has kind of got a rose pink in it. Maybe a little turquoise or something here. What do we got? Oh, green. There we go. So now I'm choosing these colors based on the next project or card I'm going to do so I can use up all of the supplies of what I'm using. That'll make sense in a minute. So I'm going to take a little bit of water. And I usually put the water down first before my powder because it's a really fine powder. And when you go to spray water on it, it kind of goes poof. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water in my wells here. I should have filled up my water. Let's go with those four. And now I'm just going to take a tiny little tip of something here. Let's see what we got we can do here. Um, what can we use? You know what? Let me find a tiny... There we go. I'm just going to use the tip of my scissors. 
because a very little bit goes a long way you guys if you need to add more you can but I'm just adding a tiny little bit there that's our green what is this one? Oh, turquoise gotta love the turquoise right so I'm gonna add a tiny bit of turquoise here I might have even done too much green there but there's some turquoise and yeah these you really should put your lids back on so they don't take off everywhere or spill I think if you spilled these you probably wouldn't be able to get it back up let's add a little bit of that one there And of course our pearl white. Now I marked this one pearl white because I use it all the time. And it makes it really easy for me to find in my box. A yeah, little bit of that there. There we go. Okay, I'm going to wipe off my scissors. And now we're going to just watercolor paint. Let me see if I can move this in a little bit for you so you can kind of see what we're doing here. We'll zoom in a little. All right, now I'm just gonna use a small paintbrush. I'm gonna mix up my paint. Let's start with the white. I'm just gonna mix it there in the water. I guess I need to Move my camera over so that you can see the mixing wells a little bit better, I think. Oops, wrong way, sorry. There we go. Now we're... Now we're cooking. We mixed our white, created a little watercolor there. And we're just going to paint our snowman. And the embossing helps your watercolor stay in the lines. You're just going to paint it on there. Get his face here. When it dries, it'll even be shinier. Right now it's wet. I'm just going to let that go there. Missed him. Okay. Let's see. Let's add. How about a blue scarf? Here we go. Let's do that. Let's mix up our blue up here. Now when this dries in your wells here, since this one doesn't have a binding agent, remember I told you the Prolex doesn't have a binding you can actually, when this dries, if you wanted to use it again, just add some water and reactivate it. Let's make a nice bright blue scarf here. Probably should have gone a different color because the paper's blue. But you know what? That's okay. We'll add a little pink in there. I got this real pretty pink. Well, it's kind of a reddish pink. Mix that up. Make his hat. Pink there. Like I said, when this dries, it's going to be nice and shiny and fluorescent. Maybe we'll add a little bit of green there on the leaves of the holly. Right there. And you can blend these. Okay, say like you wanted his scarf to have a little blend of pink in there. Just blend it right in. They blend fabulously. Okay. So now we've got our little snowman painted. Oh, maybe I'll do the ground a little bit blue here. Let's do that. See how well that shows up on the dark cardstock? And when it dries, 
it'll look fabulous, okay? And like I said, you can use this on white cardstock and it shows up just as great, okay? I like it on the darker. Okay, so that was our first way. We used watercolor. Now what we're going to do, let's get a greeting on there. How about we do Christmas wishes and joyful greetings? Let's do that. So our second way, I'm going to take this off my block here. So we're going to stamp our greeting in Versamark. Don't worry about that over there. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that leftover stuff. So we're going to ink up our greeting really well in Versamark here. And we're just going to stamp it where we want it. Yes. Okay. Let's add a few snowflakes in there. So I got a little snowflake, and that is from, where's that from? Where's that stamp set? It is from Snowflake Wishes. Way too many cool snowflakes in that one. So we're going to take and ink up our snowflake. I'm going to randomly stamp it on here. Maybe, now this guy has snowflakes too. They're a little bit smaller, so let's grab some of those. Switch this out. We'll ink those guys up. And fill in some of the background here. And one more. You know, if you have to start trying to figure out where to put things when you're stamping, you might be done. You know, don't overdo it, but have fun. You know what I mean? So now, we've put Versamark on there. We're going to grab our regular pearl white. We're going to grab a nice soft bristled brush. And just dip in there. Not a lot. It doesn't take much. A little bit goes a really long way. And then you're just going to go right over that embossing powder. Or that embossing uh, first mark. And just rub it in there really good. Look how pretty that is when it shows up. Oh my goodness. Love this stuff. You know it's holidays. you got to have shiny. You gotta have blingy shiny. And this stuff's a lot easier to deal with than trying to deal with uh, you know, glitter and everything. I know a lot of people hate dealing with glitter during the holidays, but me, not so much. I love it all. If it shines and it's fun to do, I like doing it. Okay, it looks kind of messy, doesn't it? Wait, wait for it. Grab your little Swiffer Duster. Now, I would be careful. This guy might still be a little wet right there. All you're going to do is dust off the excess. I'm trying to avoid him because he's wet. If it were me, I'd normally let him dry before I continued on. It doesn't take long to dry. I kind of like that I mix those colors of that blue and pink. It came out really nice. Like it. Like it, like it. All right, now we've dusted him off. Look at that. Look how quick and simple and colorful that is. Now don't forget, this one needs to have a sealer, a binder. Now, if you do not have some sort of craft room, you know, uh, protection or protector spray, go to your bathroom, grab a fine mist hairspray, spritz it on there, be done. Do it at a distance because it, even this can change the color of your cardstock a little. It, it's going to be natural because it's, you know, putting something wet on there. I'm just going to go over my trash can here and add a couple of real 
fine spritz and look at that we're done and this stuff dries fast but I would highly, highly, highly recommend you do this outside in a well-ventilated space. I just did this in my space. It's a little strong, okay, but I'm doing it for video purpose only. So now we got this little guy, and we're just going to mount right to, let me clean up my space here a little. I'm just going to mount that right to my card base with... Ta-da, the glue. Always have my glue. Now, how quick and fun was that? And you learned two different ways. Technically, you could have learned three. If you wanted to make the outline of your snowman fluorescent, you would take your embossing powder, set a little out or onto something that you'll be able to pour on, add a touch of whatever color mica you want mix it up put it on like you normally would embossing and you now have colored embossing powder that simple and it shimmers so what else would we do to this card we'd probably add a few little blingy and we come up with this add just a few little bling and how fun is that all right there's three ways now, remember this? You got all this stuff over here. What are you going to do with it? You know what? We're going to create a Northern Lights. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a trick. I don't know how many of you have the ink refresher. Um, I think uh, Tim Holtz or somebody, Ranger, makes it. Me, I make my own. All ink refresher is to me is water and... Ta da glycerin that's all it is that's all ink refresher. so just do a couple drops of this glycerin in some water in a sprayer and the reason I'm going to do this with these is I'm gonna lightly spritz my paper and what that's gonna do is it's going to make these mica powders blend really nicely okay you don't have to do this this is an extra step but I'm just going to lightly spritz this. It's going to be wet for a second. And it'll dry, which is fine. We don't care. Now, we're going to take our... Let's take a bigger paintbrush here. What do I got going on? Let's take a little bit bigger brush here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my colors here. And all I'm going to do is add some swipes across here. No rhyme, no reason. Just add some color on there. Now remember, they're not going to show up as great um, right away because they're wet. Let's add some blue in there. Look at that turquoise in there. Oh, that's going to be pretty. Oda, oda. And if you want, since you put that, that ink mover, you can move it around. And let them blend together. Let them roll and blend. Okay? Now, it doesn't look like much now, but you know what it's going to look like when you get done? It is going to look... Now, this one I did on black. Look at that. Is that not a perfect Northern Lights? That's exactly what we did there. We put some on there, we rolled it around, and we let it dry. You can dry it with your heat tool which that's a pretty wet piece right there. Let's see how fast it'll take to dry. If it's too fat, too long, we'll build the card with that one. Let's see. You can even use your heat tool to move the liquids around. Let's add a little more pink in there. God, I love that turquoise, right? Let's add some more of that. This way you're using it up. What you can also do, if you don't have little wells like this that you're doing this and you're just doing it on your space, take your cardstock and just dip it into the piles of liquid you have and flip it over and you have this. So you're just kind of, um, what is the new, what is that called now? Smushing. So you just do smushing with that. 
Let's see how this is going to dry really bright colors. Look at that. All right. Anyway, I'll let that sit aside. I'm going to make you sit here and listen to my heat tool for an hour. So you have this. Oh, what do I do with it, Tina? That's why we're going to make a northern light scene really quick. Yes. All right. Let me put away these. Wipe off my stamp. Now for this we need my Stamparatus. Let's bring that little guy in. Now you can do this either stamping or you can black emboss. Black emboss is going to save you a little time, but we're not going to worry about it. Now I'm going to bring in Campology and we've got these beautiful trees right here. And we're going to be able to set those up to kind of, should we do a, well, should we do our scape here? Oh, let's do it this way. That's kind of pretty, isn't it? Let's do it where it's kind of in an angle there. Yeah, I like that. But before I get started, I think what I want to do, remember a couple weeks ago I showed you how to make stars using your uh, Phil Martin or your white ink refill? Let's make some quick stars on this before we stamp. And I always keep my little ceramic tray that I do this with. And it always has white kind of residue left in it. And all I have to do is just add some water to rejuvenate it. Take our toothbrush. Remember we used the toothbrush. Let's activate that white a little bit it's on there. That's why I never clean this, because then I always have white. Okay, we're going to take our toothbrush, and we're going to flick some of our stars on there. Remember how to do that? Look at that. Stars. Done. Cool mess. All right. We'll set that aside. Wipe the ink off me. Let it dry just a second before we stamp. I don't want to get that white ink on my stamp, so I'm just going to... Doesn't that look cool already? Alright, here we go. Guess what? We're going to make a Northern Lights card real quick here. So we're going to grab some trees. Like I said, you can do this faster probably using um, black... Um, embossed powder but we're just going to use our regular memento I'm going to stamp them a couple times with black memento now remember I did this one on black see how this one's drying in the blue isn't that beautiful hey it's going to be a beautiful card I mean I'll probably make something out of it since we made that background together and I'll put it on the post below all the cards we made today so we're going to stamp that in black at the bottom it's not showing up too well i may have to use black emboss because this is actually black uh, uh watercolor paper i believe i was using but then i figured out i didn't really need to use watercolor paper because we weren't saturating the paper so badly that you know our technique would work so Oh, look at those guys. They're showing up great. Okay, let's move our stamp over and get a line of trees here in the bottom. So just stamp them two to three times. Make them nice and, nice and strong in there. It's a night scene. You're not supposed to be able to see your trees too much. They're more interested in the northern lights, I'm sure. Stamp this little guy again. Didn't look like much when we started, but do you see how it's coming together now? Oh, look at that. How pretty is that, right? Let's stamp that one one more time. 
cinnamon of those trees a little better. And I still have ink in here. I can make a couple of Northern Light cards. Or, like I said, let it dry. Activate it with water later with another card. Okay, so you got your Northern Light scene there, but we need to fix it up a little. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep our memento black. We're going to bring in a black sponge. And you know how I like to make frames. So we're just going to kind of darken the top and the corner edges. So it kind of makes it more of a night scene. We'll do our bottom corners. Little along the bottom. And look at that beautiful Northern Lights card we got going on. Put a few streaks of black in there if you want. Doesn't really need it. There's your Northern Lights. And let's grab our... Remember, we learned how to make a glowing star. We're going to do a glowing star again. So we're going to take our Q-tip. We're going to lightly dip it in our white. And we're just going to make a little kind of foggy. See how it just doesn't have to be real bright. Because we're just doing a glowing star. So let's put another one over here. Again, this is a part you don't have to do. Um, I don't know. So I just kind of like the glowing star idea. Let's put one right in the middle there and we're good. And I'm going to grab my white gel pen. Make sure it's started here. And I'm just going to do a light dot right in the middle of that little glowing I made. And that'll make it look like a bright star that's glowing. There you go. And then all you're going to do is pick your greeting. I mounted this, believe it or not, to pull out some of those greens. I mounted it on evergreen cardstock. And it kind of pulls out those greens. You want to add a couple shooting stars? You know what? Grab your ink pen. And just do a little swipe. And there you go. You have a couple of little shooting stars going on there. There you go. Those are mica inks. Aren't those fun? Alright. So. You've got watercolor. You've got smushing. Which may not even be on my list of ways to use this. So you're going to do a little smushing. You're going to do a little watercolor. You're going to do a little painting it on there. And at the, down on the bottom of this blog post, like I said, I've got a PDF for you. It tells you a little bit about pigment powders. It defines a little bit about the difference between artist pigments and, and cosmetic type pigments. I talked to you a little bit about spray fixatives. The types of uh, mica inks that do have binding agents and the ones that don't. And there you go, 10 different ways you can use this stuff, okay? So make sure when you're done with this one, you spritz it with your fixative or hairspray. And then mount it on your card, you are good to go. So there you go. Couple of holiday cards on this hop for you using pigment powders. I hope you have it fun today and you have a very happy stampin day stay safe and healthy my friends bye bye now